what happens is people of promise have a tendency to postpone. I lo- Go ahead, Chad. I loved what uh, uh, Joshua said because this was my first slide for you. He said, he, because he spoke to me uh, yesterday and he said, the 13 original colonies cannot postpone any longer the fullness of my plan. And so that becomes important for you. And people of promise, we're the worst to fall into that. We want to keep saying, well, maybe next year that will happen. And the Lord did something with me several months ago. He took me to uh, Matthew chapter 9, or Luke chapter 9, and it says, uh, lift up your eyes into the harvest, and don't say this is four months from now. Lift up your eyes and see now, and the Lord really dealt with me for two or three days over seeing now so we could propel ourselves into the future and not postpone what he wants to happen. And he said, we can be just like Elijah. We can postpone the future. And that's what happened when Elijah saw what Jezebel sent toward him. It was a demon host. And he actually saw the demon power that was going to kill him. And so he ran. Well, that postponed what God... And there was no one greater than Elijah. But it postponed what God was trying to do for almost 14 more years. That's what happens, and that's what we can't keep doing in America, is postponing what God wants to do. And I think the enemy is working with us to use, uh, use uh, uh, America to postpone what God's trying to do, Therefore, we lose this anointing, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And God is telling his people, you have to rise up now. And it has to start the way I intended it to start. And that's this original 13 colonies. That's why you become so important in this next move of God doesn't mean that the spirit won't fall, but there's something about you activating roots that can just be recovered throughout the entire United States. And when that happens, you'll see the power of postponement coming because remember the Lord finally Elijah wanted to die, so he was ran. He really didn't want to die or he had to let Jezebel kill him. You know, you have to you have to know that in your crisis, you're coming up with some crazy thoughts. And if he had really wanted to die, he would have just stood there and took, taken Jezebel on. But he ran because he didn't want to die. And when the Lord finally was able to break through, and he was looking for the Lord in everything he could look through, and finally that still small voice came. And he said, no, you're going to go back, and now you're going to have to anoint three people to do what I intended you to do last week. And we're going to have to wait till their anointing comes into timing. So all the mess that Jezebel and Ahab could have been taken out from last week, now it's going to have to, it, it's just going to continue to multiply in the earth over the next 14 years. We do that. Those are the type of things that I think the Lord is dealing with us on right now, and He's getting us into a place where we're cohesively understanding his time, so we do not choose. I, I thought about New Jersey, and New Jersey coming up for some election soon. It's very key this time, because you have to understand the word. I was sharing this on one of Stephen Strang's programs. 
what visitation means how we vote, we get visited. That's what the word actually means. We're choosing our visitation in the earth, our being overseen in the earth. The word is linked with overseeing. We're choosing how we're being overseen based upon the way we vote on things. And nobody has ever, I am not, uh, I want to say this right, I'm not a uh, real political type. I don't trust big government. I didn't trust big governments in the late 60s, in the early 70s. I haven't seen a whole lot different in this last season than what we saw in the 60s and 70s. And because of that, God is saying, I want to get you to a place where my government is able to move and say a word and cause government to align. Now, to do that, we're going to have to be delivered of a lot of stuff in the body of Christ. We're going to have to get past our Judas syndrome. Uh, you know, Judas had one goal. It was to get Jesus to help get elected who he wanted elected. You are aware that was what was Judas's demise. He was political. He wanted to see Jesus support his political leanings. I'm sure he was religious. I'm sure he prayed. I'm sure he did all of that. But he wanted Jesus to support that so he could change the leadership of civil government. And when Jesus said, but I'm here for a kingdom, I'm not here for that. When Jesus did that, Judas shifted and turned against him. 